Good morning, friends. Once again, I welcome you to the new session of God's Word. And today, we are going to discuss about a topic which is an active field due to a thin charge sheet. We are going to talk about the electric field due to a thin charge sheet. In our previous chapter, or in the previous lecture, we have discussed about the electric field due to a linear charge body. Today we are going to talk about a thin charge sheet. Suppose we have a sheet which is very thin sheet like aluminium foil or silver foil <coughs> or you can say you can have a, let us say a paper which is having a charge let us say plus q and whose surface charge density is sigma whose surface charge density is sigma so clearly everybody knows what will be the total charge on the body that will be equal to sigma into S. This is the total charge on the body. Now, according to Gauss theorem, according to Gauss theorem, the total electric flux, that means either you write like this, E dot dS, or you can write like straight away phi, will be equal to 1 over epsilon naught times the charge enclosed. This was the statement of Gauss theorem. Now it means phi is equal to, put the value of q, that will be sigma into s over epsilon naught. This is the total electric flux on this charge body. Now, due to this charge on the sheet, what will happen? An electric field will be generated which will be moving actually radially outward along all the directions, along all the directions and the Gaussian surface that will be formed due to uh, this uh, charged or electric field. Clearly you can see that Gaussian surface will be a cylinder. As I have told you earlier also, if our uh, body is a linear body, we will get a cylinder. Or even if it is a sheet, it is a cylinder. So we will get a cylinder. Now, the diagram will be somewhere looking like this. This is the Gaussian surface we are having in the form of a cylinder. And this is the charge sheet. Now, clearly you can see that this is how the electric field is moving. So, this uh, situation can be divided into three sections. First section will be the cylindrical cap which is on my left side that means we are talking about this circular cap not cylindrical not cylindrical it will be circular it will be circular cap Second section will be again the circular cap Again, the circular cap on my right side, that means I am talking about this. Is this clear? And the third section will be obviously the curved surface of the cylinder. Curved surface of the cylinder. So these are the three sections where the electric field will be considered. It means the total electric flux will be equal to the sum of uh, you can say the electric 
flux due to the first part plus the electric flux due to the second part plus the electric flux due to the third part is it clear total electric flux in this system will be the sum of the electric flux of all the three sections now you can clearly see now try to understand here very carefully now you can clearly see when i talk about this first part when i talk about this first part the area vector ds is in this direction the area vector ds is in this direction and the intensity of the electric field is also in this direction that is also in this direction it means the angle theta between e and ds the angle between e and ds will be equal to 0 degree and what is the value of cos 0 degree everybody knows that cos 0 degree is 1 that means through the section a or you can say the first circular gap we will be getting maximum electric field so phi will be equal to e d s this is the first one this is the first one it will remain same similarly when i talk about the second part that is also the same situation the only thing is area vector is in this direction electric field is also in this direction so again theta is equal to 0 degree same so from the second and also i will be getting the maximum flux that means e d s and it out now when i talk about my third section which is the curved surface you can see this is the curved surface the area vector is this the area vector is this in this direction and the electric field is in this direction electric field is in this direction or you can say in this direction and the area vector is in this direction it means both the area vector as well as the electric field makes an angle of 90 degree and we know that cos 90 degree is equal to 0 cos 90 degree is equal to 0 so the electric flux through the curved surface will be also equal to 0 that means plus 0 is it clear we have divided the section into three parts first circular gap second circular gap and the third curved surface area now one can clearly see that all the points which are on this curved sorry on uh, this circular gap or on this circular gap will have the same intensity of electric field all the points which are lying either on this circular gap or on this circular gap will have the same electrical field intensity so what i can do i can take e as constant from both and i will be left with the surface integral of the area vector ds which is obviously the circular ends which is obviously the circular ends so here either you can write pi r square to be the area of the circle pi r square or for the time being uh, you can leave it as s to 2 es this is the electric flux Now let us consider this as equation number two. 
Now what the Gauss theorem says electric flux is this. What we have calculated the electric flux is this. What I can do? What I can do? Clearly I can equate equate both first and second when I equate what I get 2ES is equal to sigma S over epsilon naught S cancel with S and I have to find the value of E so E will be written as 1 over 2 epsilon naught this 2 will come in the denominator and multiply by sigma so this is the electric field at a point due to thin charge sheet hope this article is clear with your all doubts the rest we will continue in our next lecture thank you very much for being attentive and God bless you. Take care.